Starship plans for 2024 are teased. SpaceX gets denied by the FCC again. Mother Nature takes a whiz on multiple Falcons. And we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. As SpaceX continues to renovate both the Gateway to Mars by installing new utilities for Test Flight 3 and Starbase with the construction of new factory buildings, testing of the new Starship and booster is about to begin. On Thursday morning, Ship 28 was rolled out of the construction site and made its way to the launch site, hosting an animatronic Rudolph and a Motion 6 Snow Santa. Hey, still beats Disney. Later that day, she was hoisted onto SpaceX's now only remaining test stand at the Gateway. And eventually, maybe as early as Monday, she'll undergo a static fire. So keep an eye on Lab Padre Space's YouTube channel for eyes on around the clock. MyRGV.com attended an invitation-only presentation on Tuesday at the Brownsville Event Center, where former director of crewed spaceflight at NASA, who is now SpaceX's Starbase general manager, Kathy Leaders, provided an update on the company's long-term plans to use Boca Chica for R&D only which is per Elon's 2022 Starship update. Well, since the FAA is now granting SpaceX their licenses, that no longer seems to be the plan. And so SpaceX has already begun the construction of a second launch tower at the Gateway. She also said teams are still digging through the data to determine a cause for the auto detonations during test flight two, and that the next test flight will ideally take place early 2024 with multiple flights following. One of their goals for next year is to begin looking at catching boosters so they can turn them around and launch again. Meow on to Starlink. SpaceX's appeal of their earlier denial to obtain almost $900 million in subsidies for rural broadband deployment through the Rural Digital Opportunity Fund has been denied. It's been quite a while since we last went over this, but if you remember back, SpaceX was originally denied the Musk Bucks after becoming one of the 180 winning bidders in December of 2020 because they failed to produce the minimum required speeds via UCLA speed tests. Tests that SpaceX wrote in their appeal were done years before it had any obligation to do so. The company did launch one Starlink mission in the past week on December 8th from Vandenberg Space Force Base, California, but for the first time that I can recall, the mission wasn't broadcasted because of derpy technical issues. <laughs> Maybe the FCC was onto something after all. But SpaceX was kind enough to post a clip of the booster's 13th landing on the autonomous drone ship, Of Course I Still Love You. Then on the 12th, another flock was expected to take flight, but the mission was scrubbed at T minus 1 minute and 44 abort. seconds because of high winds. Launch abort is running. Which takes us to the Falcon Heavy mission that was supposed to launch last weekend. It too did not because of the weather, and then was scrubbed a couple more times due to the need for additional system checkouts. The weather has also delayed one more Falcon flight, but then it also delayed the return of CRS-29 from the space station. From Thursday to no earlier than 5 p.m. Eastern Time Friday. Actually make that Sunday now. Shoots, brah. Speaking of Dragon, the Axiom space crew to fly crew Dragon's fourth private mission flight, if you include Inspiration 4, is now targeting no earlier than July 9th for liftoff. SpaceX is not yet sure whether or not they'll be the first to use the new crew tower at Slick 40. But speaking of Inspiration 4, Jared Isaacman, its commander, and the commander for the up-and-coming Polaris Dawn mission, posted on X that he recently was at SpaceX HQ testing the new EVA suit. Picks to be released sometime before the mission, which is now delayed to no earlier than April. But now it's time for today's honorable mention. On Thursday, Rocket Lab launched their 10th Electron mission of 2023, beating their previous record of nine held last year. And the first since the rocket's failure on September 19th. The vehicle carried a synthetic aperture radar satellite from the Institute of Kyushu Pioneers of Space, a Japan-based Earth imaging company. The mission was titled The Moon God Awakens after the Japanese God of the Moon. I assume not Allah. Must be his brother from another mother. Makes sense. About as much sense as naming this not moon mission after the moon. I would have done the exact same thing. But that's all the news I have for you today. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you supporters for supporting and members for remembering. An nominal weekend to all. Until next time, Godspeed.